This morning's Mass is being offered for Bernard Worm. Our entrance antiphon, The Lord brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with shouts of rejoicing. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, on this Easter morning, let us call to mind our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And on this Saturday, within the octave of Easter, we pray, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. O God, who by the abundance of your grace give increase to the peoples who believe in you, look with favor on those you have chosen and clothe with blessed, blessed immortality those reborn through the sacrament of baptism. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Observing the boldness of Peter and John, and perceiving them to be uneducated, ordinary men, the, uh, the leaders, elders, and scribes were amazed, and they recognized them as the companions of Jesus. Then when they saw the man who had been cured standing there with them, they could say nothing in reply. So they ordered them to leave the Sanhedrin and conferred with one another, saying, What are we to do with these men? Everyone living in Jerusalem knows that a remarkable sign was done through them, and we cannot deny it. But so that it may not be spread any further among the people, let us give them a stern warning never again to speak to anyone in this name. So they called them back and ordered them not to speak or teach at all in the name of Jesus. Peter and John, however, said to them in reply, Whether it is right in the sight of God for us to obey you rather than God, you be the judges. It is impossible for us not to speak about what we have seen and heard. After threatening them further, they released them, finding no way to punish them on account of the people who were all praising God for what had happened. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior, the joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has struck with power. I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Though the Lord has indeed chastised me, yet he has not delivered me to death. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Open to me the gates of justice. I will enter them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The just shall enter it. I will give, you th I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me and have been my Savior. I will give thanks to you, for you have answered me. Cleanse my heart, 
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus had risen early on the first day of the week, he appeared first to Mary Magdalene, out of whom he had driven seven demons. She went out and told his companions who were mourning and weeping. When they heard that he was alive and he had been seen by her, they did not believe. After this, he appeared in another form to two of them walking along on their way in the, to the country. They returned and told the others, but they did not believe them either. But later, as the eleven were at table, he appeared to them and rebuked them for their unbelief and hardness of heart because they had not believed those who saw him after he had been raised. He said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Well, my dear brothers and sisters, as we um, continue marching through this octave of Easter, this eight-day celebration of one day, this great day of Easter. I'm particularly moved by um, the sharing of the faith. And I think, you know, I've kind of been doing that in my own life, my own personal spiritual life as well. Um, not, not so much more now, but um, I have in the past. And um, I think it's something we can do now, especially in this time. So what am I talking about? Do we know the difference that Jesus Christ makes for us in our life? What value does Jesus have in our life? Why is our life different now that Jesus Christ is in it? Or, I mean, if Jesus has always been a part of your life, it's to say, how do I notice that my life is different from someone who does not have Jesus Christ in his or her life? That's a question worth reflecting on quite a bit. I was kind of thinking as well as um, couples who have been married five, ten more years or anything, um, you know, after the honeymoon period uh, fades, which is about six to twelve months after uh, marriage, and then you, um, I hear so many couples struggle. Really, that five to ten year mark is really critical. Um, those first five years are critical as well, but right after when you have to keep choosing your spouse, when you have to keep making that daily decision and kids come along, and you think, what am I doing here? Couples go through a lot of really difficult stress. And the ones that make it through at the 10-year mark, the 20, 25-year, a lot of them want to renew their vows. And I think it comes out of a sense of, I remember why I love you so much. Let's publicly say that. Let's say that again. I think this needs to happen in our spiritual lives as well. Jesus might be a part of our lives. He might, we just might take him for granted as maybe someone in the background or someone who's always there. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. But what I am saying is I think we need to, every once in a while, just sit down and say, Lord, why do I love you so much? How, how is my life different that you are in my life? I know for me, you know, as I reflect on that, it's... Really, it's very, very strong, but it gives my life direction and decision and meaning. He, the Lord injects meaning into everything, in, in, in the sufferings and the joys, everything in between. And I think, wow, Lord, you are so good. You keep leading me to things I don't necessarily, I would not have chosen on my own, but they're not bad. And I think, wow, and you continue to surprise me. I love being surprised in a joyful way. But do we know the difference that having Jesus Christ in our lives makes? The disciples in the Acts of the Apostles, they couldn't stop talking about Jesus. They couldn't stop proclaiming him. 
because they knew how much their lives were changed. They knew the gift of the resurrection of that new life. In our gospel, Mary Magdalene, uh, Jesus cast, out of whom Jesus cast out, j- driven out, drove out seven demons. She knew the gift of new life. She knew the gift of the resurrection. What does she do immediately? She tells someone. She tells the disciples. And then Jesus at the very end, go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Well, if we don't know how Jesus Christ changed our lives, how can we share that with anyone else? I'm not, I'm not trying to sow seeds of doubt, but I'm just saying, let's concretize that. He's doing incredible things. He continues to do incredible things um, from what I hear for, from people. Um, I think we're getting all a little stir-crazy, but that's okay because he continues to work on it and praise God. I know it's early morning today on Saturday, but I think he's going to send us good weather so we can actually be outside and enjoy it. Um, but I really think we need to first say, wow, Lord, my life is different. In what way is that? That is worth sharing. That is, that's what it means to be an Easter people. That's, that's how easy evangelization is. Uh, Mother Teresa had a definition of evangelization. She, all she said is, evangelization is nothing more than taking the love of Jesus I have in my heart and putting it in yours. So let's um, speak that love, that love of Jesus. Let's concretize it. Um, I do best by thinking um, I have a very small notebook, so just writing a very brief page um, on that just to get my thoughts out, or if it's speaking with someone or just in the silence of your heart. How is my life different? And that is worth sharing. That is worth sharing. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit, God, who drinks and bread and wine, we say, please and joy of God. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. At all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. 
At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Bernard, our Bishop, Andrew, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
our spiritual communion prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of, his, of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, well, remember, it is Saturday <clears throat> morning, and uh, so we will have confessions today at 3.30. Um, just like normal. And then tomorrow's Divine Mercy Sunday. So we will have 8.30 in our parking lot. Um, we'll do 8.30 Divine Mercy Chaplet, confessions afterwards. Similarly, 10.30 Divine Mercy Chaplet, confessions afterwards. And then 12.30 in Spanish, Divine Mercy and the confessions. Um, yeah, just to celebrate the, the joy of Divine Mercy. So I think that's all we have. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.